set to do something different today, but the Lord told me I'm not quite finished with Genesis. I've got to go back. I'm going to go back and pick up two minutes again where I finished. It's not what I had intended to do, but I was in prayer saying, what am I supposed to do, Lord? And or, you know, what do you want for me? And God said, why don't you finish what, I, what you started? So I'm going to do that in Genesis 48. And I think it's going to be a special a special message for you this morning because we're going to talk about blessings. And I want to tell you something. I am blessed. You're looking at someone today who has been blessed. God's blessed me greater than, than I deserve. And I think about it sometimes. Sometimes when we're crying and talking about what we don't have, sometimes God will say to me, why don't you praise me for what you do have? And that's what we need to do as God's people. We're a blessed people and we ought to be a grateful people. And the gratitude that we have to God is what drives us to serve Him. Grace. One of the sweetest words we know. Let me tell you what grace is. Grace is that young man who goes over to, the, to his elderly neighbor and rakes her leaves because she has no one else to do it. Grace is that little girl who memorizes Bible verses and earns points to go to the Awana store and buy a Bible or a little gift for a mother or dad. That's grace. You know what grace is? Grace is blessing. Grace is someone who has something to give to someone who has need without ever expecting anything in return. And folks, today I stand before you and tell you, God has blessed me. And I'm grateful for my Lord's blessings upon my life. Grace he is a picture of blessing. Charles Francis Adams, 19th century political figure and diplomat, kept a diary. And one day he entered in his diary, went fishing with my son today, a day wasted. His son, Brooke Adams, also kept a diary, which is still in existence today. And on that same day, Brooke Adams made this entry. When fishing with my father, the most wonderful day of my life. The father thought he was wasting his time while fishing with his son. But his son saw it as a blessing. What has God done for you today that perhaps you've overlooked, but you have not realized how much of a blessing it really is. Those are the things I want us to think about as we study the Word of God this morning. Genesis chapter 48. Genesis 48. Would you stand with me as we honor the reading of God's precious and holy word? Beginning, let's begin in verse 14. Then Israel, which is Jacob, then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And Jacob blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for blessings. Lord, we are so blessed. We, everyone in this place, if we'll think about it, we owe you so much. Because we've been blessed so much. Father, I pray today that as we look into this passage of Scripture, that we'll see how you, through your amazing grace, you have blessed us. And God, I pray that we will see the importance of and how to pass down those blessings into the lives of others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Important of grace. Blessings are important. In fact, they are important to pass down to our children and our grandchildren. In the final chapters of Genesis, we see a beautiful picture of the blessings of grace. 
the grace of God who blessed a man named Jacob, who he renamed Israel, and then used him to pass those blessings on to others. And here he is, 147 years old, unable to walk, unable to do much of anything, sitting up on his bed and laying his hands on two teenage boys, Joseph's sons, to speak God's blessings upon these boys who have been the future of Israel. Henry Blackaby said, more than anything else, God desires to have a love relationship with His people that is real and personal. Friends, God wants to bless His people. Jesus said it this way, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man of you among you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good, gift, good things to those who ask Him? Blessing. The blessings of grace are important to us. Notice with me when we look at this passage, what I see is that through grace, we see God's desire for His people. Through grace, we see God's desire for His people. People. Genesis 48 is a story of blessing. Here is this aged man, Jacob, far from the land of promise, far from his home, but right in the center of God's will for himself and his family. God had raised up Jacob, Jacob's young son Joseph, to be ruler in Egypt so that Joseph, so that God through Joseph might bless his family, might protect his family. God had overcome the pain of betrayal which Joseph had experienced when his brothers threw him into the pit and abandoned him. That pain of betrayal. God had overcome that pain of abandonment as those brothers sold him to some Midianite traders and they took him to Egypt. Joseph understood that God had worked through this painful event in his life, in his life for good, for the good of others, for the good of his family. In fact, God was using Joseph to bless a whole, a whole, bless nations of people because it was Joseph's wisdom and insight given by God that caused him to, to impress upon Pharaoh the need to store up grain, to store up food for those years of famine. And then God used Joseph, used uh, Pharaoh's, Pharaoh to appoint Joseph to be a, a ruler in Egypt and then to, to meet out food to, to, to to give food to those who were hungry. Yes, God blessed a whole lot of people through Joseph. Joseph believed the principle of Romans 8, 28, long before Paul ever wrote it. And we know that all things work together for good to them who love the Lord, to those who are the call according to His purpose. Very early on in his life, Joseph saw God's mighty hand at work. And now... In this passage, as the time of his father's death grew near, Joseph wanted his sons to hear their grandfather's testimony one more time and seek his father's blessing. Verses 1 through 5. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, Look, and Jacob was told, Look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Jacob, who was named Israel, Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the, name, in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make you of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now... Your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine as Reuben and Simeon. They shall be mine. Jacob, talking about God who appeared to him, was referring to that special revelation of God. We remember studying, I'm sure, when, when God showed Jacob a ladder reaching into heaven. And the angels of God ascending and descending on that ladder and the Lord God Himself at the top of the ladder. Here, 
God made His promise to Jacob. And no matter what happened in Jacob's life, the Lord Himself would be with him to accomplish His purpose. Genesis 28 tells us the account, And behold, the Lord stood above that ladder and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and east, to the north and south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Wow. What a powerful blessing. What a blessing. A promise that God would always be with Jacob. <clears throat> to guard and guide his steps and accomplish his purpose in his life. What greater blessing could we have in this life than the blessing of God's own abiding presence? And yet, that is exactly what we have as the people of God. We have the blessing of God's own presence with us. In fact, we have His own Holy Spirit living within each one of us. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Paul said, Do you not know that you're the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Romans 8.10 If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. At the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, His holy presence comes to live within us and will be with us forever. Just as God promised to be with Jacob until He brought him back to the land that He promised him, so the Lord Jesus Christ has promised to be with us until the day that He takes us to the land that He's promised for us. That's why Jesus said in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to Myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The same God who guided and guarded and preserved Jacob in the Old Testament is the same God who lives within us today and is getting us ready for the day that we will meet Him in glory. And while we live in this life, God wants to bless us and use those blessings to touch the lives of other people. And that's what we see in Joseph's visit to his father. Jacob wanted to bless his son Joseph. He wanted to do something special for Joseph. Jacob, Jacob had been blessed. He wanted to pass on the blessing. Verses 5 and 6. And so he said, And now, Joseph, my son, your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, they're mine. As Reuben and Simeon, your brothers, they shall be mine. Your offspring, whom you begot, after them will be yours. All your other children will be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers and their inheritance. But Ephraim and Manasseh, they will be mine. I'm sure Joseph didn't expect to hear these words from his father. Because what it meant was that Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's sons, 18 and 19 year old sons, the grandsons of Jacob would receive the same inheritance as Jacob's own sons. The grandsons would receive a son's inheritance. Now this particular moment, I'm sure it didn't mean a whole lot to these boys who were standing there in the presence of their granddad. But in the days to come, when Moses would take and lead God's people out of Egyptian bondage, and then Joshua would lead them into the promised land. When they went into the promised land, Ephraim and Manasseh, those two sons, their descendants, would each have a whole section of land. And so the blessing was not so much for the moment, but it was for the days to come. And God was leading Jacob to bless these sons. Manasseh and Ephraim would each have their own tribe of land. Just as the sons did. The tribes of Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher each had their land. 